Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has been jet-setting like a Kardashian. But he's not using his own money to pay for the six-figure trips. A new ProPublica investigative piece shedding light on what I call a bad bromance between Justice Thomas and GOP billionaire mega-donor Harlan Crow. The article reveals that for more than 20 years, 20 years, Thomas and his wife Ginny have been accepting luxury perks from Crow, ranging from trips on private jets and super yachts to exclusive resort vacations. But according to ProPublica, Justice Thomas never revealed these trips on his financial disclosure statements. It's unclear whether Thomas has violated any law or regulation by accepting such gifts and not disclosing them. Justice Thomas responded to the report himself, saying that he was, quote, advised that this sort of personal hospitality from close personal friends who did not have business before the court was not reportable. But many legal ethics experts beg to differ and say Thomas should have disclosed the private jet travel at a minimum. Joining me now is Jesse Isinger, senior editor and reporter at ProPublica. Jesse, whoo! Now, this is a story, the details of which are mind blowing. Shocking reports of Clarence and Ginny allegedly taking a private jet in 2019, this one was real doozy for me, to Indonesia to board Harlan Crow's super yacht for a nine day vacation. The cost of this alone would have been for an average person to cool half a million dollars. That's one trip. There's also reported trips to an exclusive to an exclusive all-male resort in California and to Crow's private lakeside resort in the Adirondacks. There's even a painting of Harlan Crow and Clarence Thomas chatting with other guys, including Leonard Leo, the Federalist Society leader regarded as gearing the Supreme Court's recent hard turn to the right. I mean, Jesse, how'd you guys get all of these details? Well, it was an extraordinary reporting feat. I was the editor, so I can uh, say that by Justin Elliott and Josh Kaplan and uh, Alex Meyer Jersky. And uh, we've been working on this for months now, um, digging into this. They uh, looked at flight records, but then they also managed to uh, extract this from people, yacht workers and workers at the Adirondacks Lodge and places like that. So it was really, it was an amazing reporting feat. I'm very proud of those guys. It sounds like some old school journalistic sleuthing here. So, Jesse, I want to take a listen now with you to Justice Thomas describing how he spends his vacations in a recent documentary about his life. Take a quick listen. You know, I don't have any problem with going to Europe, but I prefer the United States. And I prefer seeing the regular parts of the United States. I prefer going across the rural areas. I prefer the RV parks. I prefer the Walmart parking lots to the beaches and things like that. There's something normal to me about it. I come from regular stock, and I prefer that. I prefer being around that. RV lots and Walmart parking lots, I don't see them in Indonesia for Clarence Thomas. I mean, Jesse, what's your reaction to Justice Thomas presenting himself as, quote, regular stock after what you guys discovered? Well, we found that a pretty extraordinary juxtaposition. That documentary was funded by the billionaire who is underwriting these luxury trips and has been doing it for over 20 years. Um, there's been an effort to present Thomas this way as a, just a regular Joe and an everyman. And um, it's true, absolutely, that he's got an extraordinary personal story and came from poverty, but now is being treated um, to the life of a 0.1 percenter uh, on a public servant salary. So this is a really extraordinary, uh, really galling, brazen juxtaposition uh, of sort of the appearance um, and the reality here. Jesse, the Supreme Court, it's the only federal court in the United States without a formal set of ethics rules. Senator Van Hollen issued this statement in response to your report. Americans' confidence in our highest court is, think, is tanking because of this kind of conduct. We need answers, and the court needs a code of ethics. Just last month, the Judicial Conference, which makes the rules for the federal courts, adopted new ones to require justices to provide more detailed accounting of free trips, meals, and other gifts that they receive from corporations or other organizations. But, Jesse, even before these new rules, Justices like Clarence Thomas were supposed to disclose gifts of transportation, including private jet flights. I mean, is this just delayed accountability for Clarence Thomas? Did he really run afoul of anything until now? 
Well, uh, there are two issues here. One is a longstanding norm of judicial probity, of judicial behavior. Um, we talked to justices and judges who would literally not let their friends buy them lunch. They'd split the check at lunch, or they would never use their title making reservations at a restaurant because they don't want to take advantage of the office. So that's really the big issue here. And then there's a technical issue of whether he violated the law, also very important for a Supreme Court justice, whether you're violating the law or not. And ethics experts told us, seven ex experts told us, that he had clearly violated the law about the private jets and probably the yachts, because there was no exemption for transportation. Then there's a question of whether he was violating the law for the stays at the Adirondacks uh, Lodge, um, the resort, and things like that, and the stay on the yacht uh, while he was in Indonesia, et cetera, New Zealand, the Greek islands. He's uh, taken multiple super yacht vacations, and those probably violated the law, too. We'll see now whether he will start disclosing this, whether he will stop, um, and whether there'll be further accountability. There certainly are calls for much more investigation. We don't know all of the details.